Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, 29th of August. Indian security forces neutralize three terrorists in anti-infiltration ops in JNK. Bangladesh interim government revokes ban on Zamate Islami, calls Hasina's move political maneuvering. And Bloomberg report warns Lanka's polls may hinder economic recovery. Sabri opposes IMF DSA renegotiation. And now for all the details. In two separate anti infiltration operations on Thursday, Security forces neutralized three terrorists in the Kupwara district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. In a statement, the White Knight Corps mm. said two anti-infiltration operations were launched by the joint forces of the Indian Army and Jammu and Kashmir Police in the general areas of Tangdhar and Machal based on intelligence input about multiple infiltration bids on the night of August 28 to 29. In the ensuing gunfight, one terrorist was neutralized in Tangdhar, while two more were eliminated in the Machal sector. The operation was ongoing as of the last reports. The infiltration attempts by foreign terrorists come as the federally administered territory is gearing up for assembly elections after 10 years. The border region will witness elections in three phases, with the Union Territory holding the first phase of voting on September 18. Meanwhile, Heavy rains battered the coastal areas of India and Pakistan along the Arabian Sea, flooding cities in western India's Gujarat state and forcing thousands of people from their homes. People wadded through waist-high waters that partly submerged vehicles and roads in part of this state, where at least 28 people have died this week in rain-related incidents. More than 18,000 people have been evacuated since Sunday from cities near the coast, disaster management authorities have said. The army is also involved in relief efforts in the western Indian state. The rain also triggered flash floods in the neighbouring Pakistani port city of Karachi, causing power outages, media reported. Pakistani authorities have also warned of flash floods in two districts of the southern province of Sindh, which is still recovering from the massive floods of 2022 that inundated large swaths of the country and damaged the economy. Meteorologists in India and Pakistan have warned that more heavy downpours and strong winds are expected to lash the coast as they predict a cyclonic storm will develop by Friday. If I have a child of 8 months and a patient is in the oxygen, my mother is in the morning. She doesn't have light in the morning. She doesn't have tablets and nebulizing. She doesn't have anything. दिक्कत वही है लाइट नहीं है मेन तो पानी का प्रॉब्लम है खाने का प्रॉब्लम है और यहाँ रोड तक हमें चल के आना पड़ता है अंदर कोई आता भी कमर तक पानी में कमर तक पानी में खाने की व्यवस्था बाहर से करनी पड़ रही है कोई अंदर आ नहीं रहा तो मेरे लिए सरकार से विनती है कुछ हमारे लिए कुछ कीजिए एंड फॉलोइंग अ रिसेंट अटैक बाई बलोचिस्तान लिबरेशन आर्मी इन पाकिस्तान बलोचिस्तान प्रोविंस दैट किल्ड ओवर सेवेंटी पीपल बलोच लीडर मेहरान मारी डिस्क्राइब दी असोल्ट एज ए इनएविटेबल रिएक्शन टू लॉन्ग स्टैंडिंग रिप्रेशन बाई द पाकिस्तानी गवर्नमेंट आर रिपोर्ट डेज आफ्टर बलोचिस्तान लिबरेशन आर्मी लॉन्च एन अटैक इन पाकिस्तान बलोचिस्तान प्रोविंस दैट क्लेम्ड ओवर सेवेंटी लाइफ बलोच लीडर मेहरान मरी ऑन वेंसडे कॉल द अटैक inevitable response to decades of subjugation and repression by Pakistan's government. Murray, who resides in the UK, said BLA has carried out several attacks yeah, in the past and inevitable. said if they Pakistan will subjugate past, and vandalize Balochistan province, and, um, then they will they have to face reactions. The Baloch leader criticized the response of Pakistani officials, including Interior Minister Mohsin Nakbi, who downplayed the severity of the attacks, suggesting they could be handled by a few police officers. I think this attack was inevitable. They have carried out such attacks in the past, recent past. And um, when you subjugate and vandalize a people's nation for so long, you will get reaction, repercussions and consequences. You will have to pay for what you've done.
Over the past three years, the BLA has intensified its operations, transforming its hit-and-run tactics into larger-scale attacks, particularly against the growing Chinese presence in Gwadar and other parts of the province. Reacting to the recent attacks, Murray said that violence is a natural reaction to years of oppression and draw parallels with historical conflicts like Palestine and creation of Bangladesh. The BLA claims that China's involvement in the region has only exacerbated the plight of the Baloch people, exploiting their natural resources while ignoring their basic needs. That's what they did. They duped India, uh, China into investing, and now China has opened its eyes. I mean, Balochistan is a big treasure trove. Everybody wants to get in on the game. And China, of course, is a new capitalist country. I'm sure it wanted the. It is Sandak and other projects. It has. It. I think it's got its money out anyway. It has tripled its investment, whatever it gave the Punjabis. China is going to pull out of this whole CPEC because it's not a viable. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Interior Minister Mohsin Nakvi on Wednesday told the UN delegation that the country is planning to begin the second phase of Afghan refugee repatriation soon. Nakvi highlighted Pakistan's status as one of the worst hit nations by global terrorism. He expressed Pakistan's commitment to Afghanistan's stability, affirming ongoing support efforts. Nakvi acknowledged Pakistan's long-standing hosting of Afghan refugees and ongoing phase repatriation of illegal residents. He emphasized the necessity of legal documentation for staying in Pakistan. Pakistan continues to assert that Afghanistan's soil is used for attacks against it, though the Taliban officials deny the allegations, attributing Pakistan's security concerns to its own lapses. Moving on. Taliban on Wednesday rejected the allegations by United States about the presence of multiple terror outfits in Afghanistan and has said the Afghan territory is not being used against any country. Fasuddin Fitrat, chief of Taliban forces addressing media, said the allegations by U.S. are baseless and added ISI has been completely eradicated in Afghanistan. He further said Tehrike Taliban Pakistan does not have any bases in country. We all know that TTP has clear bases in Pakistan and control areas there. They launch operations against Pakistani military forces from there. Fitrit was quoted as saying by Tolo News. Earlier this week, the United States had alleged while the de facto authorities have claimed the ISIS was eliminated from Afghanistan, there are various groups active in the country. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehba Sharif too labeled similar allegations stating that TTP organizes its operation from Afghanistan to attack Pakistani installations. And Bangladesh interim government on Wednesday revoked the ban on Zamate Islami Bangladesh, its students wing Islami Chhatra Shibir and all associated organizations, a ban that was imposed by ousted Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina under an anti-terrorism law. In a notification issued by the Interior Ministry, the interim government stated that it could not find any definite link between the Islamist party and terrorism. The government believes that Zamate Islami Bangladesh, Islami Chhatra Shibir and all other associated units of the Zamat are not involved in acts of terrorism, the notification added. Interim Law Minister Asif Nazrul has said that the ban was not based on any principal stance but was instead used by Hasina's Awami League for political manoeuvring. They attempted to brutally suppress the movement by enabling the people's uprising as terrorist activities and Zamat BNP's terrorism, he added. The ban on Zamat and its associated organization was one of the last actions taken by Hasina's administration, which accused the party of being involved in violence during the month-long anti-quota protest that eventually led to Hasina's ouster from office. The Islamist party, which was banned from contesting elections by the Supreme Court in 2013, has said it will now seek the restoration of its registration with the Bangladesh Election Commission so it can contest future elections. And Bloomberg Intelligence in its latest report stated that possible attempts to stall the reforms in the aftermath of the upcoming Sri Lankan presidential elections are likely to result in a suspension of the IMF program and threaten the recovery.
The report highlighted that presidential contenders who have plans to renegotiate the terms of the IMF bailout program if they come to power raises uncertainty around the fate of the program that is now in place. It stressed that it remains vital to keep the IMF's loan program on track to strengthen Sri Lankan recovery. Meanwhile, the island nation's foreign minister, Ali Sabri, has warned against any attempts to renegotiate the debt sustainability agreement. The minister highlighted that resuming negotiations with the IMF could jeopardize the next tranche due in December, as well as subsequent disbursements from the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.